compare and contrast styles yeah, from what sure. we just saw. That's actually a really good point. I'm actually feeling Tyloo on this one. I feel like the, the kind of four mouse water in right now, they've finally broken that duck, the 0 and 10 land run. We'll see whether they can actually recover right now. It's a really difficult time for mouse sports overall, but here we go then. Mouse sports versus Tyloo. Quite an interesting match matchup, and we'll see whether there's three sets of armor, two Molotovs, and two smokes. That almost suggests it's going to be definitely an inside play. You want those Molotovs to the post situation map. We discussed this in depth, and we have got some players towards Ivy as well, and Speedy towards main entrance. So I would suggest, similar to what we saw in the previous game, like you said, we could compare the ideas presented towards and the kind of approaches the teams are going with here. So maybe a little fake towards outside, and the bomb ending up towards inner. If you're going to have those Molotovs, you want to have that post-plant Molotov situation going forward. Difference in the style being from the CTs, because remember last time we had that three kill exchange at the stairwell, and then it was back toward the fake where Chris J is. So this will be fun. I think you're going to enjoy it. Well then. I mean, always interested when Tyloo play. They always surprise us with the way they approach the CT side, especially. Well, slowly but surely, they're getting closer inside of the Brown Halls toward the B site. It's Lowell and Dennis that'll lead the charge in that respect. Nico, meanwhile, goes back the other direction. I'm thinking with Lowell clearing out these halls to make sure there's no one up close for a fast flank, and Nico going back over, this is going to be a three, or I guess two, two, one split. A main, Pop Dog, Chris coming down Ivy. And what utility they did have gets thrown now. So that'll create a wall by the bomb train, hence why Dennis goes ladder rather than coming in through Sandwich where he could still be spotted. They're gonna go for the fast plant. Attackers above them inside a control room, but he doesn't have the vision. They do deny it. Good shot from Fancy in through the smoke. Bomb not planted. 18 seconds. They've left this so late. And Ty Lu, they're losing members, but they've got just enough. Lovely shot from Nico to turn back on Mo after he stabs them. Wrapping around inside of the train. They've just got to the bomb. Eight seconds. Has to go for the plant. Attacker chance to deny. He's a little bit late on. Down to a one versus one as a result. I take that back. Didi's still in this. My mistake. He's just behind him. But Speedy has a lineup. If Attacker got there, it was round over. He's one second late. Speedy can't quite see the vision. They're going to hold this. No kit, but they've pushed him back. Seven seconds. DD's getting closer. Needs to make sure he's a little bit wider. There's no gap. He's got to go forward to the box, and DD's going to throw this off against Speedy. It doesn't even matter. Ten full seconds already gone, and now the exchange comes through. Attacker finding three kills there. It was some amazing play for Nico as well. That little 180 got towards main entrance. What on earth was that? Not enough to win the round, I'm afraid, though. You can see those two smokes. Like we said, we thought it would be towards inner with the Molotovs purchase as well. They do the two smoke towards outside as well. The bomb goes down, but then Fancy, he denies the plant. That makes things really difficult for the terrorists at that point. Great work from Tyloo to bring it into a 1-0 here. But the nightmare start, and Matt, I love this. It's the force buy on the second round. These of the really exciting explosive rounds surely give an AK towards Nico I would expect considering he is the, the superstar player one of the most mechanically gifted players in the world it will be Dennis and Lau with the AKs here Nico just at the deagle I assume he had to drop the AK that's how that really works and if the players who can afford to drop the AKs don't buy the armor well then Tech Nines deagles Okay, so they haven't fired the AKs just yet. You want to keep that a little surprise, right? You don't want to give that away too early on. It will be a predominantly SMG setup here for Tyler. They have got two M4s, though. And there comes the flashbang. Trying to work that first pick. It's going to be Chris J going out of the Deagle here. And in they go. Chris just waiting it out with said Deagle. Meanwhile, though, it's going to be a rotation back the other way. Somebody still waiting with that smoke posted at Ivy. Won't have much information on this. Didi is up close on the ramp at inner as well. He could go for a faster rotation in behind the ladder. Finally, they'll get the rifles. This fast force by to try and catch them off in position. Dennis, he'll go fast. Flash as well. Good shot from Chris. That was a 1D hit attacker on top of the train. Gives Dennis a bit more room to work with as well on that AK-47. But Lowell's caught up. Two of them now inside of the train. I was going to say one. I was waiting for somebody to swing out, but he actually hits the shot. It's down to just DD. This buy, this aggressive buy with the bomb plant, it's going to work. DD's got no kit, and he's going to back away with his M4. Well then, the force buy from Mouseboards works out, and then some. It's actually Lau with that AK-47. This man here doing a great job there with the first two kills, managing to push the CTs back, and that SMG buy from Tyloo. It's going to fall apart as DD with the saved M4 here towards CT spawn, hoping to get some exit frags here. But at this point, Mouse Sports don't really need to hunt. They're fine with him saving an M4. You know, they're going to be picking up weaponry that's left behind from the fallen CT. Speedy will be sniffing towards CT spawn. He hasn't got anything to lose, but he's got the Tech 9, right? So that's absolutely fine. And I think the time. It, okay, so he's just a little bit misleading. He's actually in the corner there on the left instead of. In front of him, good flashbang from Speedy. Does spot him. Could actually take this kill down, but he thinks, oh, well, he's got the M4 here. And a pause comes in for Tyloo. At this point,
point as well. So they've saved the M4. I, I guess they're kind of deciding and contemplating, do we force into this round? We've got like less than 2k per player, of course, after losing that second round. And then forward, we go for pistols, 5.7s, body armor. I guess that's the discussion you have to have. Well, it's a fast tactical. They've got the four of them. So yeah, I guess why not when you have these big decisions to make? It looks like they will be going for the force by here. Mm. It's an M4, Scout, UMP. To be fair, we saw Mo hit some excellent shots on the Scout yesterday. That's true. Well, then a Scout for Chris J as well. I think he has taken uh, multiple times in CSGO's tenure the best Scout player in the game. It's not the best title to have, admittedly, but it's actually a very impactful weapon in the right hands. Can find some very important kills. So let's see if he can deliver here today as well. Round number three, Chris J. Up against Captain Mo. He was impressive yesterday with his weapon as well. He gets to the lane quick enough, but no one quite there yet. On the mouse support side, they're just sitting back, Chris and Nico watching to make sure anyone's going to push through Ivy. Meanwhile, Dennis, slow, speedy, all brown halls, and he comes through not quite close enough to do any significant damage. I'll flash back around the corner as well. You can see where that deployed, just to push them. Need in, follow that up. Better nade from Dennis. That's my favorite nade of the day. Back them away as well. And they haven't got a read yet on the weaponry that's bought out. The scout's not been fired. They're not 100% sure the M4 is up or not. So they've got to try and get that information quite quickly. Mm, well, very disciplined stuff from Asport so far. I can see somebody getting a little impatient here, trying to hunt for some information. He doesn't want to go any further than this. Still could be jiggle peeking here, so he's fine for now, not over committing, but does spot a couple of terrorists, falls back, doesn't take any damage for it. So it will be. A nice execution here from Mouse Watts. I know it's going to be pistols, like a mishmash of weaponry here. So, smokes towards outside, play, treating this like a gun round. The smokes drop. There is a big gap there for Captain Mo. Massive gap. I think that, okay, they're going to win inside regardless. It's not going to be a big deal. It's a little bit of a fake in that sense. So, Nico watching the flanks head. Oh, what a shot that was. Can't find a second, but he's done the damage at this point. Now it's going to be fancy with the UMP. Find one kill and a second as well. Good pick up from Speedy, though. Wraps in a little bit late. If it was there sooner, it might not be the situation that it is two versus one. Mouse Sports, bomb going down as we speak. Crystal plant that. He's gone over to an AK-47. He started the round with a scout. It's going to be somebody left alive. Thankfully, he does have one of the rifles, the M4. He doesn't have to go hunting to try and find that downed anywhere else. He's already got it in his hands. He tries to spot down. They're not playing the high corner just yet. They're actually supporting both from lower. Somebody with a flash, or decoy, rather, in behind him. Mm. Silenced decoy from far? Yeah, it's not it's, really going to do much, is it's it? It's a bit desperate, but like you've got it, might as well throw, you know? <laughs> give it give it a go. I think he's gone. I think yeah. he can't find him fast enough. Now that the real shots will go out just for a chance that anyone's waiting on the inside of that smoke, but he's going to run. He'll make it. Just getting to the ladder now, Speedy. I don't think... Ooh, he runs the short lane. I was thinking if they could go down behind him, they could have caught him, but they don't. They just want to keep their AKs as well. It's still very early. As round three goes by, we go back and forth either direction, and we had a very fast buy from El Sports, so they still need to strengthen their own money before they start hunting for others. Good job from Speedy after losing those two kills from the UMP. They managed to bring it down to the 2v1, lock him out, and they do save the M4 once again. That's going to be in the hands of somebody. That is a player's name. Not to be too confusing for the newer viewers. Somebody, nothing, nobody. Who's nobody? He's somebody. Right. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Full eco pretty much here. You have got the saved M4, of course, but the other teammates can't really justify much more than some PD-50s and 5.7. So the MAC-10 makes perfect sense here. Nico once again opens things up towards the main entrance, and here comes the MAC-10. Time to spray them down. It's going to be loud with a double kill, though. And like we said, a simple procedure. What a shot that was. I would like to see that from Nico's POV. That looked pretty special, even though it is against the other players. Didi, he'll be the last player remaining now in towards Connector. Not really much he can do if he gets one kill. That'd be great. But Dennis takes him down and farms a bit more cash there, and he finds $600. Will he be upgrading from that MAC-10? I'm not so sure. I guess at this point, he's got 7k, I would say probably a good idea. There it is. Don't want to mess around against a full buy here. No, that's the point. They're all going to be on rifles. No one's onto an AWP. There's money, obviously, available on the support side, but why would you upgrade when you've already got AKs? Keep running faster plays. Didn't see him. No, nope. sorry, Henry. You've been denied. You were not a good boy this year. Santa's not giving you any I'll gifts. I'll have to try harder. A lot harder, if I'm honest, Henry. <laughs> I like it. Nico's going to get in toward A main. Meanwhile, it's Speedy and Lowell getting in toward tunnels. It's very straightforward. It's been 
this way pretty much every single round. So rather than the fast-paced play toward B we normally expect on Trainer, what we did see a little bit last game, Mouse Sports is playing default almost every single time. This round would finally break in completion, Tai Lu, although it would be a four-round bonus. Pick up 29. I'd potentially see pistols coming out off that, but that's it. Well then, this is a real tricky, tricky round for Tyloo overall. Look at what's left of them. We're at 1 minute 15 mark, two smokes, a couple of flashbangs, one kit, no orb. Captain Murdoch, when he really comes to life with that sniper rifle as well. No sniper for Mouseports, but how has Nico got in this position so early on the round? This is absolutely ludicrous. This is actually sick. Boom. Bye-bye, Captain. Yeah, you can look over to where your teammate just died. I'm already beside you. Tagged him out. Bomb was dropped way back toward him. I mean, they've got to go for it. Fancy has kit on B. I bet you're dead right. They can't yeah. do anything of it. DD's going to try and get towards CT, potentially just post up at the stairs and catch anyone at back tunnel. I don't even think he's going to be confident to do that. They fully want to commit to the save. That's insane. Like, there's no way you should be so passive that someone like Nico, someone as deadly as Nico, can walk all the way up to the bomb train undetected and then take out one of your players. That's nuts. That, that can't be happening. Obviously, they're up against it. They don't have the orb, and they've got limited grenades. They can't smoke off or get key choke points. At this point, yes, we're, we're pushing towards CD spawn, but they know they're going to be saving now the CT, so it looks like the hunt might be beginning. They're not committing just yet. Nico's still towards connector. Lau checking towards CT spawn. Fancy is watching the flanks as well. I think if you can get one more down, that'd be great for Mouse Sports. That means that you can kind of bait in a force buy around that. It wouldn't be the strongest. Lau comes in now. He's going to try and hunt this down. There is low HP on attacker. Obviously far enough from all, away from the bomb radius. That won't grab him, but he's going to sit in that tunnel and his teammate to try and post up. Fancy does find Chris. Oh, that's good from Lowell. I was going to say Didi's going to be there to trade it, but hits him first on the headshot, responds. Fancy picked up one more, so he'll save his M4, but it would have been three guns, not one. And as I mentioned, only getting that $2,900 injection. They were very low on cash to begin with, so only pistols. And yeah, Mouse are absolutely fine with that as well. You can see you got two players on 10K as well, 6K, and uh, the orb comes out as well for Chris J. So, all the Js. JJJ. They, they actually did go for armor, just to mention on two players here, DD and Attacker. Yeah, so that's a kind of balance in the books, right? Getting the money into the 2K mark. They After this round, they will be at maximum loss bonus, so that's fine. They get $3,400 on top of what they're going to have right now. So CZ's 5.7s, and Fancy with that saved him for the previous round. It's another little partial buy here, but uh, Chris J, first time we've seen with the AWP, pushes through to smoke as well. And he beats it to it. It's attacker that's next in line, but Chris has position. He's just going to wait, spot it toward Ivy. It's a very small gap, I have to say, to peek through, but it could work. Could work, especially if that happens. Attacker just walks into it, not aware that he's already there. And you're right. You talked about the CT side as Lowell takes down DD again, just a pistol. Tyloo is very creative normally on their CT sides. We have seen them go passive to, their, to, to good effect on Cobblestone before, but yes. it's too passive because Nico walking in there, this is looking well, actually quite, kind of grim for their setups. It's normally on Cobble we compliment it because it's, it's really passive crossfires. For the T's, the T's, once they commit, they're in the bombs, they're locked in, and it's like you've got crossfires raining on top of you. That wasn't really a crossfire. That was a very passive play from the CTs, allowing Nico to get very close, and he's in the most talented player on the server, I think that's fair to say. And uh, he capitalized and... Managed to break their defense down single-handedly there. This is a simple round. Not really much to report, I'm afraid. Just one kill going in favor of Tyloo. The money finally will be arriving once again. They have a 5-1 after winning the pistol here. Tyloo's starting to struggle. And look at the money built up. Yeah, it's so Lowell much. Lowell almost had 16k at the start of this. It's pretty impressive. He's German, wants mouse sports to win, but grew up in Hong Kong. So Tyloo Gaming, I was just in Hong Kong. I've been in Germany this year. So you're the same? I would say you're I... basically the same. Yeah, I like Hong Kong. Oh, so but they have the Nürburgring in Germany. It is a tough call, you're right. I'm, I'm with you, dude. Well, right now, German fans... Well, there's two Germans, but... To be, yeah, it's, to be fair, it's a more European lineup, but the organization itself. Sure. No less office in Cologne. There we go, then. Dennis now, he's got the AWP. Ah. He has a decent spawn. Not known for his open prowess, and he does get taken down straight away, that attacker. So obviously, you can see what they're trying to do. It's Chris J. Sure, he's the main orb, but Dennis had that really decent spawn. Goes towards Pop Dog, trying to catch him out there by surprise, but does lose the first frag now. Five on four, something to work with here for Tyloo. The orb has been recovered from what I can work out. Yep, so Speedy's managed to pick it up. Is somebody pushing into the smoke? Thought about it just then, and he gives the orb back into the capable hands of Chris J there. M4 for somebody, M4 for attacker. They split ways. They were side by side, but they'll take different obligations. Somebody's going to cover the cross toward A main so nobody can slip in and catch off attacker as he covers off Pop Dog in aggressive fashion. And Bomb is above that in Speedy's hands. Whether or not he goes down, another story. 
Nico and Chris J could easily rotate to the hallway instead. I think it's going to be a split in decision in that regard. Nico's going to try and hold them on the A site. Okay, there's some utility in. Quick wall of smoke. Chris is going to rotate around and join them on B. And Lowell's kill on Didi. Excellent, because now he smokes off the lane, gets deep inside of the site, covers off rotations, and Chris is just shot on Fancy as soon as he arrives from Z Connector. This looks very good for Sports yet again. We've got Nico coming oh, in. Look at this too. as well. Yeah, but it's just all falling apart everywhere. That kill's happening. Nico landing some great shots there in the back. He's just got such good awareness. He was towards main entrance for the majority of that section. He comes back, finds a rotating player with Dog as well. And it comes down for this initial frag. Dennis goes down of the orb, but they still recover. They're holding the nerve here. Mouseport's not giving too much away at all. They go back towards inside. It was Lau from that upper round position. Nails the first headshot. They go down towards lower. Chris J gets in position. Stop the rotations as you pointed out. And now another fantastic position for Mouse Sports. The maximum loss bonus is full in fact for Tyloo, but as a CT side, $3,400 is not enough to buy up, at least not convincingly. You have to be another partial buy here. Five sevens, maybe some body armor here and there. Another timeout coming out. So, so second tactical used already from Tyloo. Yeah, good time to use it. You, this game's running away from you. It's 6 1. CT side. You CT side, and you can't buy. It yeah, is the time so of timeout. Yeah. Just to confirm, it's on I... the screen. No, it's on the oh, screen. Oh, the screen was wrong. I thought I said it wrong. I'm sorry. No. It was... I'm never wrong. I should know that. It's true. I Th confirm. thought you were totally going to debate me on that one. But no, I, like you say, I mean, this is. We see teams trying to stack them late a little more than I'd like. And, and the situation is grim. Like you say, CT side especially, you've got to start winning rounds. They're going to force on this as well. 3,400. They do have maximum loss bonus. So if they get force. to two. Well, okay. Balance the books, we'll say. Yeah, 2K is where they need to end up. So that's what they're trying to do. So they'll go UMP to attacker. Moe's going to go Deagle, but sit on that alone. He's not going to invest beyond because he wants an AWP. Yeah, so this is like enough. So the attacker, as long as you keep the money on the 2K mark, as we normally say, it's $3,400 on top of that, then you have got enough for a full buy. Captain Moe buys no armor. He's going to be the orb. But we haven't seen him really have a chance of the orb as of yet. So that would be great. Get him on the AWP. They probably can start swinging some rounds together, but this is looking pretty grim right now. For the mouse, on well, the mouse sports, it's been great for them. For the Tai Lu side, as we get into round number eight. DD alone towards inside. A four-man stack towards out of it. There's not really much they can do with it. Right now, you can see mouse sports waiting for any sort of aggression to come in from main entrance. Nico's covering that. And there's three players working towards Ivy as well. Chris has bomb, but he's going to be the one to take the peak with the AWP. As he does that, they slide Dennis over passively. Normally we see, we mentioned it yesterday, teams jumping across the mouth of that tunnel to try and get themselves in position. Cover both ways, and that's going to work. Molotov goes down. Chris sits in position, catches somebody jumping around the corner, played it perfectly, and now Moe's got to rotate over just the deagle in hand. They're very lined up. Watch the flashes, does pick one. He's still got a chance for more. Moe, he's got all three. Somehow you saw that coming, and all of a sudden, the man who saved for an AWP in the next round, he picks one up. It's on to four kills for him. It's just Lowell remaining. If this is the ace we've been waiting for all day, it's the nicest one you might see. He's got all five. My God. <laughs> that was absolutely sick. Yes, they did line up for him somewhat, but uh, he didn't actually uh, capitalize at that point. He comes back in and here's two lovely shots of Desert Eagle. Picks up the AWP as well. Like you said, he was actually eco this round to get the AWP and he just finishes off with an ace. And that's a really nice way to get back into this game. It's got a morale, morale slightly going forward as well. So Captain Mo starts to wake up now and he's managed to get himself an AWP for free. So that works quite nicely for him. 6-2 now, Tyloo do find a round. Thanks to one player there, but Mouse Sports will be too shaken by that one. They've got a ton of money going forward. They knew it's a bit of an anomaly. And here's Captain Mo, aggressive. I don't think he lands that shot. No damage inflicted just yet. So Chris J looking to return the favor. He did actually hit him through the wall, though, with the AWP, and does nine damage. Yeah, I know. I saw, I was a bit confused by that. Yeah. It's the lowest amount of damage, damage I think I've ever seen from a wall bang on the AWP. Okay, did it go know. through two, potentially? I think it clipped the train and the wall, and maybe? hit him in the leg. Yeah. Yeah. And then hit him in the baby toe. Yeah. Either way, Nico's going to back off. So too does Chris. Things change dramatically. Lots of money still on the Mouse Sports side. At least in this round, they've got potentially a buy enhanced still on Nico and Christian. You can see it now on the screen. But the other guys, well, actually in Speedy, to be fair, the other guys are a little bit lower. They'll be fine. They'll drop out. So they've got another round to work with, at the very least. Yeah, absolutely. Still with three smokes available here for Mouse Sports as well. They have got the Molotovs and flashbangs. Maybe a set piece, so we know that those nice smokes towards either side of the bomb train here. And they love to have Nico on the flank rotations as well. Like, he'll normally be lurking for his team, catching frags, stopping rotations as well. Here come the smokes. They'll be setting them up right now. Dennis and Nico taking care of that. 
And the bomb heading towards inside potentially. Could be an outside split, of course, from the pop dog room as well. So we'll see where they decide to end up. The smoke's been deployed. And the Volatiles comes at a great time, but Chris J, he does not care. Takes down somebody to open things up. Somebody down, but Mo trades. Dennis goes out of the picture. All the smoke's out. This time they will bring bomb in. Last time they tried to fake it with Nico, remember. Attacker's on the train itself, but can't find his ten intended target. That's dissipated. Does manage to get the planter. Problem is, committing to that leaves him vulnerable, and he goes down immediately after. Chris with two. Nico follows up. Fancy. The last of which to die, but keep in mind the efficiency. Yes, it's a reset. A reset of five round bonus, six rounds overall. They, they did so well in the eco to pick yes. up guns and carry them over. They still have a buy here. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the good news about winning an eco. Here's Chris J. And how we open things up. There was so much attention taken towards that popped up position as well. It's Chris J finding three kills in total. Katamo gets one and towards Dennis, but the smokes came in. The CT retake couldn't really work out for them. And Chris J's got a bird's eye view of the bomb side there. Just mowing them down with his AWP. Nice work from him. Pretty much single handedly wins that round. Nico closed things out. But uh, like you said, still a buy available here, but that's certainly a full reset in terms of the loss bonus disappearing now. It's 7 2. Mouse Sports on the least favorite side, and then 7. It's a very centric map. As they're going to round number 10, they do buy up. AWP for Captain Mo, of course. UMP for somebody. They do get the M4s out. Still enough to buy. It's not going to be perfect, but they're going to round number 10. And just as Tyler got rolling again, it's shut down straight away. Look at the money from Mouseport. Still 10k on Nico. He's on 13 for 3 right now. It seems like he's here to go to the major map. He's not messing around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think everyone wants to go to the major. That goes without saying, but you're right. Nico's gone quiet as of late. They've talked about that a little bit. I have to reference the desk. It's been a talking point. He's not been the, the Nico we've come to know, the star player that we've seen recently. But yeah, now it sure. matters. I think that's one of the cool things about the major. You know, we talk about saturation. We mentioned this yesterday as well. Emotional investment in these games and how much it matters. Ah. All the way through, Chris J finds Mo yet again. A one duel out at Ivy, and you're dead right. Op goes down. Yeah, that's a big frag to get. Now they've got a minute to play with as well. He'll be aware. He would have spotted that orb in the hands of Captain Mo. Slow things down, see what the reaction is. What do the CTs do to get back into this round? Lao, though, he's been getting good frags here from this upper position as well. He'll be walking in. He has got Didi beneath him. It will be a massive frag and get this as well. Didi's in the open as well. Has to look between lower and upper at the same time. It's a big problem for him. And speaking of Didi, he's zero kills, two assists, six deaths. So not only in the open, but he's got to find a shot here if they do head this direction. So far, lots of time still to go by, but bomb. It's going to the tunnels. It's going to be another smoke fake on to A. Dennis will carry that over, and it will be a B hit. Nico, once again, playing the lurk. Didi down below, does find his first. Able to turn in time, flash out, but this time he's truly in the open. Gets taken down by Speedy. That's going to allow the bomb plant fast turn to catch out somebody who went up Pop Dog to try and catch them off. It's just... Attacker and Fancy remaining, and Fancy's missed the first shot just high of the mark. It's a problem for them, and he actually scoped incorrectly, but didn't expect to see anyone. He's not the primary opper. That might show right now because he's missing a few shots that come very close, all things considered, but in the end, it's going to be another round for Mouse. Here we go then. Here's how Chris J opened things up. Nice shot on towards Captain Mo. Business as usual for Chris. Gets the five on four at that point. Lau, he goes and commits towards Inter. He goes down, sure, but he gets all the information. Almost guarantees the kill for the trade to come in from his teammates as they come down the lower ramp. At that point, great positions at that stage. They got the Chris J AWP up. They've got the bomb going down as well. The rotation's coming in. And we did say the loss bonus is in disarray right now for Tai Lu. So 8-2, a substantial lead for Mouse Sports here. And another eco for Tai Lu. This is looking pretty poor for them. Uh, it's a map we don't really see them play that often. Like, in terms of, you think back to their big victories, it's on maps like Cash or, like, um, they've done some Mirage against Na'Vi as well. I think there was a Star Ladder, if I'm not mistaken. Remember that one? Yes. So, do you? No, I think it was Star Ladder. I was trying to think to confirm which tournament it was, but, yeah, it was Star Ladder they were last at. That was actually when we had Vici there as well. Yes, exactly. Cyber Zen, whichever you call it. It's kind of the cool thing with some of the Asian organizations. They keep their team name. But the organization joins us. We've Vici Reborn and Dota. Good shot from Chris. Vici Cyber Zen. In Counter Strike, it's, it's an interesting way of doing things. Dennis is going to pick up Captain Mo after attacker. Did get at least one kill for the CT side. Oh, we'll start to go backwards in the tunnels to make sure no flank potential does come in, and they've got an exit route. Make sure they've got a pattern of approach, an evacuation plan. They've gone a long way from the bomb. We've seen situations where this can haunt them, but I think they've uh, clearly checked off all of the alleys. Never been in this too case. too sure of that. Never, never, never assume. Server. You know, so Chris is going back. He's thinking about it. It's like, you yeah. know what, guys? No one's actually near this bomb. So it's fine. You can see it now. But um, yeah, you always got to make sure you've got someone watching it. Those ninjas can be a little bit 
scary at times. So, like you said, the snacks one especially, that was oh unbelievable. Watching that was one of the greatest yet saddest moments I think I've ever had to sit through. I loved it, and yet I cringed all at once. So Nico Lowell combined for 24 kills. Ty Lu as a team combined for 23. Wow. That is a hard stat to read as well when you consider that it's a 9-2 scoreline and Ty Lu's CT side of train. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for now. They get back into this game, I'll be thoroughly impressed. Even if they get a 9-6, that'll be like, amazing, all things considered. As we 5 and 4 now, and all for Captain Mo. It will be the rifles, only one kit and only three smokes remaining. That's about it before we even hit the one minute 40 mark. So a fully equipped mouse board with tons of money, pretty much enough for the rest of the game. Going towards Ivy and Chris Jay's been picking Captain Mo towards his Ivy position, left, right and centre. So. Presumably, Katamo won't be giving them an the opportunity once again, especially as he's got the M4 as well. So, Chris J, slowly but surely, start to dissect this part of the map and see whether there's anything available for him. You can see the CT towards main entrance as well. Thinking about pushing in, that's going to be somebody. He could get flashed in this point. They need to find a kill. Considering the lack of utility they have now, one smoke and an incendiary, that's it. Someone needs to make something happen. Get something working in your favor to kick things off here. But, Nico, this is such a strong position. Like I said, for that reason, that couple box makes it so good if you can time it correctly. And he saw the Molotov go in. It was bounced left to make sure no one was waiting in box. That to him is going to say, yep, they want position. They want to push us back. They want to flush us out. He's confident to wait there now. Yeah, and he'll go for the backstab as well. As soon as his teammates commit towards inside, you can see Speedy's got control of the Brown Horde right now. They're going to go in. Nico then, he can decide, do I hold for rotations towards the T-steps or do I go out towards main entrance? I'll throw a smoke towards outer as well just before my teammates go in. Get them in a little bit second guessing here. Yeah. Somebody pushing in there, though. They actually had the right read on rotation. That little bit of information without Ivy. They still rotate over. Moe's there. Shots come through, and Didi, he'll start it off again. He hasn't had to do much on this B set. They haven't been going there often, but he is getting kills on the way through. Somebody follows it up, but Chris J, he's there. And as all this goes down, they realize, okay, hang on, there's people in the B site. Nico is waiting outside. Let's rotate back. Lowell's going to get the bomb plant in. And Moe will rotate up the stairs from CT spawn as Lowell heads out toward Ivy, so they should cancel each other out. That's if he even gets that far, because Chris J is looking down and able to find it. But look back, because Didi and Fancy finding kills leaves just Chris J remaining. He's going to hold the AWP. HP, 12 and 10. Okay. He could easily go to the pistol. Lovely shot up close. And you're right, no kit becomes a massive problem. Chris just trying to bait this out, pull himself away, buy time and space, and also get noise cues on the back of this. And he's got them correctly found. Good pickup from Chris. And now Sports ace. is not letting off the gas pedal at all. That was an ace for Chris J. Really strong round from him as well. It looked like Tyler was just getting back into it. Here was the first kill for him. Takes on somebody who was aggressive towards main man. We kind of pointed that out. And he's just hitting every single shot right now. We talk about his form. He actually stepped back from the all roll this year as well to give Oscar a go, who's no longer in the lineup. But this is where he belongs. This is where he does his best work as well. So aggressive, so on point every single time and very aware in these situations as well. Especially his kind of clutches. Look at his positioning as well. Just completely outplays DD there. Pulls out the PT50. An ace to close out round number 12 and bring I thought you were going to say it. What? An ace in one <laughs> round. <laughs> no, I can't. That, that line has been immortalized now. I can't bring that back. It's done. Well, somebody is getting closer to the end of the Ivy Tunnel, but Deagle in hand, he's just going to post up and wait for them to walk in. Why do you always say that? One always tickles me. I know. It's oh, the right angle, but this crouch throws him off. It would have been perfect if his target was standing, but Chris Chase takes advantage of the shots ringing out, slides back as his teammate retreats, catches him off the GWP. It takes him down to just four players remaining, one of which is attacker on a UMP, waiting in the same position as well. Well, they're about same location on the map. And it's their last ditch hope. Round 13, and they've only got two so far on the Tyloo side. Not to mention, one of those was the pistol round. That's actually true. <laughs> it's kind of depressing, really. Well then, Tyloo, not over just yet. If you get five rounds, still workable, but that's not actually a possibility anymore, to be fair. Because it's going to be 11-4 after this one. Or oh, 11-2, sorry. And um, five players are surviving so right now for Mouse Sports and just pistols and a UMP. That's in the hands of Attacker. As they go towards inner, there's only Captain Mo there. He did some deadly work before with the Desert Eagle map. Hopefully, he can replicate that once again. He's in position to start hitting the headshots. Can't really give the same treatment as he did previously. And now it's Dennis holding the flanks as well. Just DD and Attacker remaining. They've got some armor to work with. So an AK as well, but that's gone now. And now just attacker, UMP in hand. Now shuts him down, 11-2. It's getting dangerously close to the point of turn at this stage. And Mouse is not, we talked about this yesterday, not a particularly strong trained team. This says that Tyloo 
I'd ban this out. I'd get rid of this in the future because yeah. they look lost. Thankfully, this is a 1-1 one -one match and not for elimination because they would be backs against the rope. Do go for the double-up setup this time around. We haven't seen it really from them at all, so Captain Mo is going to have it, as to with Didi. Yeah, absolutely. And the one round they win, reset after that, they did win it. No, so they won an eco and a pistol. That's what they've won so far. That, that's the crazy thing. You yeah. see these like nuts aces. To be fair, Chris J's got an ace in this game too. Yeah. But Mo's got this crazy ace. Very nice. Starts off with a deagle, but they're on the losing side. It's because they relied on that, you, you know, individual style just to get them that far. Double op setup's going to work though. Didi and Mo are going to find it. But yeah, just to, to drive home that point. That's what they're relying on. You don't see a lot of those plays from the winning team because they're playing as a team. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, train is hasn't really impressive for Tyler. We normally talk about their stylistic approach and whether they have a different kind of meta idea than the Europeans, like especially in previous tournaments and Malmo, for example, when they were showing us these crazy cobble setups and the way they were going aggressive on Mirage. I haven't really seen anything um, that's interesting me so far from Tyler, who's actually looked pretty weak on train. There we go, then they have got the man advantage towards inside. Surely a round they can pick up, but Chris J is still alive. He has been the danger man so far, and it's going to be Lau that takes down the first kill. Didi drops, and Chris J alive as well as he sets up the turret towards the B side. That was a lot of responsibility for Didi to have with an individual off in B, and he played what? a position that left upper open. They had no information, so he was a sitting duck. Good oh, no. find by Lowell as he pushes forward. Chris takes attacker, and you're already having trouble believing the fact that they just took this back convincingly despite losing the first two kills. God. You hate to see it happen. Just they get the first two kills as well. They've like funneled them towards the inside site. I don't think Tyler can believe it. I don't think Ma Speedy can believe that's, it. That's Nico S when he slips into the A site because Didi is alone in B and they slip up the upper alley with absolutely no one looking that way. We've got Chris J on top of the bomb train as well. That's kind of funny. <laughs> this is like so confident. This is patrolling the entire bomb site there. That's kind of fun. Well, it's round number 15 and looking very likely to be 13 2 at this point. Four Famas is in the UMP, not a single primary weapon in terms of the M4 and the M4UNS. So, Chris J, aggressive, of course. Why not? He's hitting absolutely everything right now. Hoping someone just makes a mistake and walks into his cross at this point. You can see a player thinking about it. That will be somebody. And, oh, timing may work in his favor. Smoke goes down. Chris J won't fire a shot just yet, but somebody does find the kill on towards Dennis. There we go. Waiting where he can. It's above the train. Has to concede the fact that his teammate gets found first because they can't get through the smoke in time, but Speedy's there. Pull it back in their favor. Not only that, look at Nico's position. Hello. Thank you very much. Tap, tap. Bye bye, Mo. Fancy. I'll fancy that fight. Let's go next. Yep, not quite. He does go down in the end to the FAMAS. So somebody will slip back in from Ivy, but unfortunately, Fancy was found by Lowell. Triangulated his position, covered it off. Immediately, it's down to just a two versus one. DD, this is desperate. You need three rounds just to avoid the inevitable three. If they win the pistol, Mouse Sports, and then they follow it up, three round spread, 13. You're on 16. It's over. Well, then, DD, what have you got? 13-2 wouldn't be good enough at this point. 12-3 may be doable. Maybe you can do something with the pistol. You never know, man. I'm trying to find some silver linings here. Keep trying. Well, DD now. Let's see what he's got. It's heard a positive kind of positioning. He's got the inside control. He's got a flashbang. Got a kill as well. One on one. Up against Speedy. With 20 seconds remaining as well. So he's actually looking good for DD to pick up this third round. Yeah, not a bad start on the... One versus two, but the problem is that time it still favors Mouse Sports, even though it's us, obvious, all good lineup, waits it out, patience plays off. He's got 12 3, good win for Didi. Speedy had to go 14 seconds, we knew it, but he didn't. It could have easily gone back to the A site, but he doesn't overreact. He knows he's got to commit either way. Why put himself in the middle if he's already on one of the sites? It works out 12 3. Yeah, a monstrous half some Mouse Sports there, especially from Chris J, the man on your screen right now. Fantastic work from him overall. I think he finishes on 18 kills, six deaths. He just looked like he got in God mode, right? And so did Lau. Nico had a good game. He started to drop off towards the end in terms of the impact. He just couldn't have, there's nothing left for him to do. He's holding the flanks. And here we go. 18 kills apiece for Lowell and Chris J. Lowell's got better ADR, Henry. I'm going to have to it. go with him on this one. Yep. You know, okay. that six ADR when you're in the 90 mark. Sorry, man, that's that's too much. Well, there you go. Matt's called it, and it will be Lowell. <laughs> it's MVP of the first half. It's worked it all out. I mean, Chris had the ace. He had a lot of impact on the AWP. I just think you're as right. soon as he gets into those positions where they're, like, they're getting the bomb down and Chris J's alive, you just feel like he's going to win it every single time. We did that stat with Nico earlier, and it was one kill to the lead of Nico and Lowell. Now it's going to be Chris J and Lowell ahead of all of Ty Lu, and not to mention Nico's not far off them on 14 so yeah they're definitely showing up speedy look, speedy and dennis are just sitting it's back been, enjoying it's the been show. a long time to be seen them looking happy to be fair they actually look comfortable they're it's enjoying each other's company seen you look happy yeah in fact i don't know if i ever have henry i don't i'm i just be happy on the outside maybe it's uh 
this is a sign of things to change. Maybe your fortunes will rise as well. <laughs> Hopefully, we can only. We're in the holiday season. It's going to be a, a joyous one for you. Yeah, more than likely. Let's not get into that. <laughs> well, it's a tweet, Matt. Why don't you read it through? One monitor is not enough for this glorious major qualifier. Hashtag E League, hashtag EL, at EL. Yeah, I would agree. I he's think got a joystick as well. I, I think that's true. He's got three that's monitors. That's how you play CS, actually. isn't it? You use a joystick I, and the racing. Yeah, I do. Uh, My racing wheel. Racing wheel and pedals yeah, of a joystick. I, I run with the gas pedal. <laughs> I, I back up with the brake pedal. Okay. I turn left and right with the steering wheel. And with my up and down shifters, I strafe to the left and right. Okay. And well, I wear I wear my driving gloves as well. Well, that's how Matt got to Global Elite. A little not secret view. Not quite Global Elite, but you know. About, around that. We don't, you don't have to tell them all the rankings. But it's about that. Steering wheel and pedals. Would try it out. Well, then. Actually, it does glitch the game. If you're drawing on the minimap with the steering wheel and pedals and you press the brake, it shoots the, the Why would you line. ever experiment with that? Because I had them plugged in and I was resting my feet on them one day while I was casting and I pulled up the minimap to draw something and it just like literally shot out like a fireworks show all over the map. It was incredible. I wow. enjoyed it. A little Easter egg for the racing fans out there <laughs> on the CSGO. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, it's going to be the second half. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Mouse Sports looking in a very good form right now in terms of this game. They need four rounds on the CT half. Not too much of a tall order, especially when the pistol here as well. Tyloo struggling, and then some. It's attack early in the charge. No one really fragging that heavily at all for Tyloo. You can even Captain Mogul, that ace. He's only sat on eight frags in total. So here we go then, round number one. And it's going to be quite a technical bite. Two smokes, two flashbangs, a decoy as well. No Molotov for post-fight situation. They are sending four players towards inside. We'll be fancying towards outer. He's got the other smoke, so presumably he'll smoke towards outside. Very similar to what we saw from last It's one smoke outside. Oh, maybe they're going to just be baiting the inside player. Okay, interesting. So maybe it's going to be the smoke now from Pop Dog that goes towards the bomb train as well, backed up by Fancy's one, which is also his name. That works. Mm. And um, back towards that side they go, it seems. Yeah, this this it's interesting, but it's a slow enough approach that it hasn't really done much to pull any rotations over to that B site. Nico was the one that thinks, okay, now he's going to go. I was going to say, I was thinking about going. He will with timing, but he's still close enough to Z Connector. And Speedy's far enough back in B. They can rotate over. No smokes. They've got to go directly. And I take that back. Okay, they did just get thrown. As soon as I look at the HUD was the exact moment they were lobbed in. And they will line up. But it's going to be a tight lineup through Sandwich. So they're going to push through. Wrap to the right. Hope that they can find Lowell and go for a fast plant toward Hitch. As I do that, though, Attacker's still on the hunt with the bomb. Didi's going to jump around, take Chris J. That'll open up the opportunity to plant inside. And with Captain Mo posted up inside Z-Connector, it's actually an interesting oh, what's going on idea there? with post-plant situation. Attacker, you've got to get that down. Good pickup from Lowell. Finally will get planted. Fancy a hold off hell when they push back through from Ivy. Attacker's sitting in the open, needs to get away from this. He's going to do battle with Lowell, and Captain Mo wins. That's the most important kill. But he's planted just far enough to the left that he'll have to push out from Z-Connector to find it. The intention was were right. The plant was slightly off for it. And Mo, he's got to go hunting. Down he goes as well. Dennis will pull off the retake in succession. It's going to make it, well, 13 rounds and potentially 15 before Tyloo get a chance. Bomb plant down. They should actually, okay, so 14 rounds. They should be able to buy in. I think buy this round. You think so? go with the same approach Mouse Sports yep, did? I think absolutely you have to. Well, to be fair, you normally know, need three or four kills. Maybe it's not that possible. Then you can probably only get one AK. Uh, so I'll have a look. So, yeah, they can't actually get one. So you need at least four kills to kind of balance things out. They can't even get the AK. It's not really an option. They could force by with their the Tech Nines. But we have had a player drop out, Matthew. So we might have a little pause here. Last player has dropped out. Hands in the air. Speedy waving. Pulling the shocks. So Just we'll get a pause for a moment. Much. Yeah. Nothing too major at the major qualifier. Nothing too I like it. See? I see what you did. See, I'm just like you. Well, I mean... Better in some ways, but uh, not quite on my level. <laughs> See, I, I do miss you, appreciate your efforts, though. It's uh, It's been good working with you. I hope it ends soon. Is this the end of it? Is this the last, <laughs> is we announcing the end of the partnership? Or this and event? 2017. Yeah. Rolling forward the years. Well, there you go. Well, we've got lots of highlights. I assume, aside from one play from Captain Mo, it's going to be all Mo sports, particularly three members, one of them being Lowell. This was when they were trying to save. He snaps in, hits a lovely shot on Didi, the high HP player, was supposed to be the one that was trading and defending his teammate. Nico was good on the lurks. Very good. And then we had Christian on Ace. He's the third I was going to mention. Yeah, Nico wasn't going absolutely nuts, but he's just very intelligent playing in terms of like being in the right place, holding off the rotations, allowing his teammates to be comfortable and eradicating risks for them. This was the most exciting moment in terms of the Tire League performance. So it's one of the three rounds they got, or two rounds, I should say, and Captain Mo got an Ace. And he had finished a half of eight frags, Matt. So that goes to show you how poor the team was operating overall. He only finished with eight frags, he got an Ace and an Eco. 
Yeah. You were having a bad game overall. I don't care if you won that round. You had a really bad game. <laughs> like, at the, at, to be fair, I mean, Didi was at zero kills, and he's far from the bottom of the leaderboard. Now he's up to eight, and he's yeah. second. So it's, yeah, it's been a very quiet. I think the, the graphics that uh, our merciless E-League graphic designers put up, combining two players to beat the whole other team kind this of This is really picture. cool. When Lau put this Molotov down there, like, they wanted to run through it and check it, but then Lau was just like, well, you just ran into my trap. Uh, that, that's worked out perfectly for me. I didn't even expect you to go that way. I was just trying to block you off. But uh, it does work out. And here's the pistol over. It's going to be 13 3 for Mouse Sports. And like I said, the option to force by F and Tyler, I would say you need a bit of a miracle right now. Maybe that is the option. It goes to 14 3. You're in a bit of an interesting position. You obviously can't get the AK down to the third. I'd say right now, you, you're not going to pull it back from the T side. I think you go all in right now and hope that uh, you get a bit lucky. Looks like they won't be going for that option. Just some upgraded pistols here Desert Eagle P250. I'm not going to be purchasing it, so it's just fine either way. Like, they're going to get AKs in third, but I just think the way things are looking, let's, let's try and get back in this game right now. <laughs> well, Didi with Deagle is going to try and do exactly that. But as you say, the rest of them sitting more passive in their approach and potentially go for that 14 rounds against them by, as it would be. They'll have to play perfectly at that point in time. Nico does find a kill on Fancy. He'll hold up below the ladder. Above, we do have somebody, quite literally. That may not matter in the end because everyone's getting picked apart, including DD down to 11. Dennis is on 16, but he can fall back. He's got teammates with guns to rely on. Down goes somebody. That's going to go the noise. Nico goes back in. Shall you continue this, Henry? Yeah. It's uh, quite obvious where it's going. No, I'm actually on the edge of my seat right now. So, DD, 1v5, 11 HP with the bomb. Oh, Dead now. Thank you. It was, a, it was a round that's redundant anyway. This is the one that's feeling up to where it's 14-3. And here we go. Dogs, you like this. Why don't you take us away? Two. CSGO Pupper E-League. Don't be... Don't... Don't feel. Don't feel. Don't be... Oh, don't be a loser don't by the Oh, fuser. it's on the bottom. Right. See, I didn't think a hashtag could break like that, but the graphic has don't to. Don't feel. So, yeah, Whoa, all right. That's a good one. That's fine. I'll figure this out at some point. I was like, what is this guy going with? Don't be It's not a beagle. Is that a name for a beagle? What oh, is this? Don't be a loser by the fuse. To be graphic. fair, it's negative 20 today, and my dog was sitting out in the front step just I chilling, saw. waiting. Anyway. That's the problem. I'm going to go back to Canada. It's going to be like negative 20, and she's a husky. And she's going to look at me through the glass door and be like, why aren't you out here playing with me? I'm going to use my catchphrase, man. What why did I manage to get back to the game? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, five AKs. Can we have a title after getting the bomb down and the pistol? They do have smokes to work with. Four flashbangs, and there is an all power Nico, though, interesting in us. Like we said, Chris J, one of the best scout players in the game right now, so he's more than happy to use that weapon. Nico, a very proficient all himself. A bit of damage coming towards attack. I think that's from the nade towards the main entrance, but... They don't really have that much to work with here. Especially no sniper rifle themselves and two smokes. That's about it. Flash in. Dennis pushed back slightly. Nico's still there. They've got a crossfire set with the EWP and he'll start glaring down a long corridor. Very linear for a nice gun to use against it. Favor that over the AK of Fancy. Especially the way Ty Lu's been struggling to find kills this game. First shot not successful, but just like that. Fancy says, all right, no where the AWP is, I'm gone. Meanwhile, Mo has at least pushed in somewhat toward the A site, not very far forward. And Nico with an AWP can easily turn. That's the, that's the lovely position over toward Ivy. You cover off one lane, turn to your right, take three steps, great. You can cover off all of this area as well, and he does exactly that. Well then, here we go. Nico looking strong right now, five on four. One step away from map points and progressing closer to the major. As we go into five on three, it's looking like Tyler have checked out of this game. I have to say, they do find a kill though. DD makes something happen here, but Dennis with that UMP making things happen as well. Three on two now, DD 15 HP. Fancy will be doing it. Or will he? Well, not sure. DD goes down 15 rounds from our sports map point. It's a game that definitely matters for both teams. They are one and one. Neither team going forward or going back. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the girl. Eight yeah. lands in eight weeks. It's been exhausting, but finally, I get a week with the best girl in the world. She is. She doesn't talk back. <laughs> okay. Lovely. Okay. To be, to be fair, <laughs> we got another timeout, Ty Lu. They might as well use them up while they can. To be fair, I think this is land 29 for the year, which is pretty it's insane. 29. Yeah, that is nuts. This, this year has been absolutely nuts. Yeah. I'm, we we posted a picture of me and Machine working together for the first time, like at the end of 2015, and it feels like a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. Like we were working some like small UK event, and it was like <laughs> comparison to where we are now, and like we're in a TV studio in like Atlanta. This is nuts. Like yeah. the comparison of where the game has gone and where our careers have progressed in one year. It's it's just absolutely nuts. It's definitely true. Good to be here. It's been a very. Good it's a privilege. That said, it's 
Mountain Sports wanting to end out the year on a high by qualifying for the major. If they can pick up one more round, they'll only need one more map to do so. All things considered, the way that their ups and downs have gone, they'll be pleased with that. You get a little bit of time. That's the cool thing with the major. There's not, there's a few events coming up. One of them is a nationality of the WSG event, and then there's Leipzig. So there's a few events in there that some of these teams could play to shape up, but there's lots of time to practice over the holidays. That's the other interesting thing, because we know holidays, specifically the player break in the summer, Christmas last year for VP, it really set some teams back who didn't put effort in. You can't do that with a major coming up. Good shot for Chris on the DD to start it off. He's got a lineup as well in front of him. They both managed to drop in before he can f find the next shot. Oh, it's all those interesting bombs already planted. Somebody's got to get away from that. Shuffles them out into the lane, and Speedy's firing down it. Right pre-fire to do. Down to a two versus one. It's fancy. Uh, How far for the <laughs> bombing is. Right. Yeah, I think this is over. Yeah. They both got kits. Just get on that. Hold it. Hot and kill. that's it. It's over. Mouse Sports still well, get to one win away. 2-1 for them. 1-2 for Tyloo. They still survive. And there's a chance that they can still get forward, but it's a lot more difficult for them. Looks a little bit too easy for us. Solid game for them overall, but I'm afraid Tyloo never really arrived there. I haven't seen them play much train before, and I think for good reason.